I was raised in the Catholic Church. I was baptized as an infant. I went through all the sacraments, as communion, confirmation, all the things. I was really a strict follower, I would say. I definitely believed in God and I believed in Jesus Christ. I, I never doubted that. But as someone who's raised as Catholic, I, I felt that there was always this barrier to God. Even though I would pray to God, I always felt that I needed the priest to really be connected to God. But as I got older, I went away to college and I realized that I had more freedom to make decisions on how I wanted to practice my faith and what is spirituality. Um, and that's where I pulled away from organized religion. But deep in my soul, I felt like something was missing. As much as I could, you know, tap into maybe like some Buddhist practices or learning about Hinduism or what stones can do what for you and all that kind of uh, practice. It, I just never felt connected to anything and I felt like something was lacking. And then my mom introduced me to a Christian church that she was going to. Uh, she had been living in California. And as soon as I walked in, I said, this is what I've been missing. And then she moved here. We all ended up moving to Rochester and she again found a church and <laughs> brought uh, my brother and his family and me here to Northridge. So the moment I realized I had put my full faith in Christ was actually in a community group. When I publicly shared my faith, I think for most of my life, I've held it internally. Yeah, I know Christ, I love Christ, I love God, right? But I've never been as public with it as I feel like I was in that moment of sharing with the group and being in community. And I think that for me, Making a public statement like that is the moment that I realized, yeah, I am a follower of Christ and I want to share that with people. My life after Christ is not so lonely. I'm not afraid to actually vocalize my needs to, to God. And in my prayers, I'm not just asking for help, but I'm actually giving up my worries, my stresses, my problems, giving them to God and trusting that God will take care of them with me, for me, um, that I'm not alone. I also just feel physically not alone anymore. I have a community that is so supportive here, that's constantly praying for the things I need. So I'm not alone praying people around me are praying, my family, my community group. I want to get baptized because I want to make that full commitment to my faith in Christ. I don't want to just have a private relationship with Christ. I want a public one. And I don't know any more public way than being baptized. It's also a moment for me to celebrate this new part of, of my journey, of my identity that I am done with my old way of relating to Christ and God, that this is now a new life for me. This is the ultimate show of that commitment to faith. And as we learned from Drew, it's a command and it's something we should do to, to honor God's command of us. Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I thought I'd at least get a few more words in before I started crying. Um, we've known each other for nearly 20 years now. And when I reflect back on what I've seen, um, I realize now that you've always been searching, searching for truth and meaning. And that search has led you down many paths, some spiritual, some education, but none of that has left you feeling satisfied. And so, as he tends to do, God saw you searching and brought you to Rochester. And although I can't know the full extent of God's plan, I do believe that he revealed himself to you here so that I and others could witness. 
sorry, you becoming a light for Jesus. And now you look to scriptures and prayer for truth and, and meaning and answers, and you apply it to your life. It's been so inspirational seeing the Holy Spirit work through you. It reminds me of a song that we used to sing at summer camp. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. <laughs> and soon all those around will warm up to its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread his love to everyone. You want to pass it on. Melissa, God's lit that spark in you, and it's spreading. It's my honor to baptize you today and to call you not just my sister-in-law, but my sister in Christ. I baptize... Oh, I don't know. You ready? <laughs> Do I plug your nose? <laughs> okay. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs>